definitely like being heavier helps. If you're trying to ride wheelies and you're on a diet, switch it up, get on them <laughs> cheeseburgers. <laughs> Cause it'll bring that bike up a lot easier. Layer, oh, watch this. All right, you guys, John's Moto Garage. Welcome back to the channel. Here we are at Cruiser Originals in Phoenix. Hit them up if you're local in the area. This is part two of our Dyna build, must have upgrades. We did a video going over must have upgrades if you want a club style Dyna. Today we're going over the must have upgrades if you want to do stunt riding on your club style Dyna. So this is a bike specifically built for stunt riding. When I first got my Dyna, I thought it was ready to go for the wheelies and I definitely learned the hard way. There's a lot of upgrades you may not even consider when it comes down to it. So, and uh, we've got Ryan with Cruise Originals. Take it away, Ryan. Uh, this, this is my personal stunt piece right here. This is old blue. It's an 01 FXD Dyna Superglide. Uh, 2000 to 2002 is the best stunt bike you can get Dyna-wise. Uh, it's Timken bearing bottom end, which is definitely what you want. Timken bearing crank, so the crank doesn't walk side to side when you're clutch dumping and stuff like that. They've got a smaller, narrower frame. They're shorter, they're lighter than like 06 and up, say the late model six speeds. It's just a really, really good platform. Balance point on them is, it's, it's so forgiving, it's almost cheating. Stock 88, let's start with motor setup. Everybody's always like, what do you got, a ton of power in that? You gotta have a ton of power in that, right, to do that. You do not want a ton of power in a stunt bike. Stock 88 inch for the five speed transmission is the best setup. Chain drive helps. I'm still running a belt on this one because I'm gonna run it till she snaps and then I'll put a chain on it. But stock 88, five speed transmission is the business. Up front, I've got, this bike's a little different. This is a 2015 Lowrider Dyna front end with race tech internals that I cut the steering stops a little bit so I get more lean angle and then I use a body hammer and rolled in the gas tank so I can you know, crank this thing really hard for drifting. But anything on the front end, you want good suspension. Race tech with gold valve emulators and springs set up really nice with a heavy fork oil is the best setup. Like fuck all that other weird fancy shit, it's, it's no good. Dual disc brakes help. They're also not a necessity. You do want to have good brakes. It makes, you know, circle burnouts and stuff like that easier, but singles will work good as long as you got good brake pads and stuff like that in there. Bar and riser setup. This is completely different than club style. Short, short with pullback. You want your handlebars sitting right here like this. You don't want to be like this because if I'm going to yank a wheelie up, I got no yank, I'm just here. If I'm like this, Boom, I can throw back into that. And when you're drifting, you're up on the bars moto style. I set mine up just like my 110. I wanna sit on my Dyna like a pit bike. So these are Speed Kings risers, six inch with pullbacks, uh, Lucky Dave's bars, mid bends. And I roll them back a little bit too. I, I honestly would prefer more pullback. Uh, TC Bros makes a two inch pullback set that's really nice. My neck's all blowing up from doing this for too long. I like to keep them hands in nice and tight. Once again, I've got a Saddleman step up gripper because it, Everything else sucks. Best seat on the market, you'll never run anything else. If you're gonna run wheelies, you need a step up gripper. Tuck and roll gripper is the best setup. That thing will lock you in really nice for drifting and everything else. Uh, protection, we've got our top and bottom sliders. Front K-bar with bottom slider. This is Trensel Derby cover. He's the one that scratched it, but I can dump this thing and layer, oh, watch this. full oh, of gas <laughs> and if anybody watched my videos you know my uh, outer primary I completely destroyed it because I laid that thing down one too many times learning the drifts um, so with the upper and lower sliders and the slider up front that basically eliminates the need or it eliminates that risk right oh yeah you're not gonna hit your primary yeah so I've never touched my front this this is from I stole this off a trans bike when he wrecked and needed a new one so I got some scratches but this stuff, this way, like when you're learning how to drift and you try and save the bike out of a drift, that's how you get hurt. Yeah. You need to be able to just let the thing go and get away from you. So I can just step off this thing and let it slide and it's not gonna hurt the bike. 
and it's not gonna hurt me. I don't really care about the bike. <laughs> I don't wanna get hurt anymore, I'm sick and tired of that. But on the handlebars, I got a, this is the one finger clutch setup. These guys are real nice, one finger's the brand. Oh, no kidding. Easy pull, you gotta have an easy pull for drifting, otherwise it's just, it's just gonna smoke your forearm because you're working this thing so much. I just got a stock lever, anything you can one finger up here. It's real nice. As far as clutch goes, gotta have a good clutch. I've got a Barnett lockup clutch in this. It's, it's weighted with a bunch of stuff. It's real loud and gnarly, but it works good. You don't necessarily need a chain, but you do need a clutch. A stock clutch is garbage. It's made to slip and slip it will. So on a five speed, you can get away with running a belt because they're short geared, they rip. They, they, the chain's gonna help you pull it up a little easier. It's gonna help you drift a little bit, but if you're good, you don't really, you don't need that. Yeah. A six speed late model Dyna, you definitely need a chain. They're way too tall geared. The compensator sprocket's like that big. They're, they're turds. You wanna gear those things down and, and get some chain underneath it for sure. But on a five speed early model, which is, this is what you should be buying if you want to stunt ride anyways. You can run a belt, just run her till she blows. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is easier having a chain, but you don't need it. It's unnecessary. Uh, got mags, stunt bike, you gotta have mags. Spokes won't hold up. You'll blow spokes out, you'll taco the front wheel coming down out of wheelies. It, it just ain't gonna happen. Bicycle click lights are real nice. <laughs> Get them at Walmart. Just reach back, click them off and on, and then you got tail lights because we don't have nothing back here going on really. This is our original, it's a Cruzy original subframe setup. This is the original prototype. They're a little different now. You've seen on John's bike. But you gotta have, if you're gonna be scraping fender, you either gotta have a frame set up like this or you've gotta weld framework into your fender. You can't just dump this thing back on a stock fender. It'll just fold. It's not gonna support you unless you've got some serious brake control. It will hurt you real, real bad. Uh, rear setup, I run 14s in the rear. 13.5 to 14s is, is dialed. A good suspension, like RWDs, works, something that's that's good. Buy, spend the money, buy quality suspension. Front, people are always talking about, you do two overs, stuff like that. Never do two overs, it sucks. You want your front end, ideally for a bike to handle properly, the front should be, it should be raked a little bit down. You should have a little lower in the front than the rear so you can be up on that front tire and ripping it around and stuff. So stock height front end with good internals, tall ass end. Set her up like a dirt bike, make her slide. My exhaust is uh, a bunch of garbage that was laying around the shop that I welded together and made a pipe out of. It runs pretty good. Custom exhaust, must have. Oh yeah, carburetors. Oh yeah. CV carburetor is the best. Uh, Makunis make more power, but they get real choppy. So you get real violent and they're kind of inconsistent in a wheelie. A CV carburetor is super smooth, like fuel injection, but when they're stock, if you ride a wheelie, if you get to about 11 o'clock, they choke themselves up and they vapor lock and you'll, you'll die every time. So you gotta, this is our actual, our, our Pro Mod carb that we sell. It's already modified, it's got an air fuel screw on the bottom, it's got an idle adjust screw. The vent is in the front and instead of in the back so the vapor locking doesn't happen anymore, it's got a shorter emulsion tube. So the emulsion tube hits the ramp of the intake and then dusts the gas out real nice. So you get a lot more throttle response off the bottom. So it makes the power of a Makuni, but it has that fuel injection smoothness when you're in a wheelie, it's like cheating. Definitely the, the proper setup right there. A fueling set of 515 cams in these is pretty bad, it has to. And they just have a nice linear smooth power band and run really good. Uh, oil pan mod, I've got an old school landing pad, the OG very first one of this style ever set up. Oh yeah. I helped homeboy design that shit like eight years ago and been running it ever since. I've never broken my cases with one. I don't have a stabilizer on this bike because it doesn't see much more than the lot. You know, I don't really care about wobbling in a corner. Cause yeah. It's not doing much. But actually with that mid glide front end on an early model, this is the most solid motorcycle I've ever ran without a stabilizer even. That's wild. Makes a big difference. Um, so oil pan, the landing pad, that's gonna be your case saver, right? Yeah, case saver of any kind. Uh, Big Bear Chopper's front motor mount, uh, Chopper Haas front motor mount, they're all the same shit. Uh, Tracker Dive makes one. Who else said the one we did on yours? Can't remember the name of them. TSM or something out of Canada. That's that's probably the nicest one out there, I think. So for stunt, the two biggest things are going to be your wheelies and your drifting. This yeah. basically is going to cover you protection-wise for either one, yeah. setup-wise for either one, and then the other big thing people ask about is back tire. And it seems like once you figure out the trick to get the wheel up in the air, you can run just about any back tire, right? Wheeling in a Dyna is easier than wheeling in anything out there. But getting the Dyna up to wheelie is the hardest thing in the entire world. Learning that like body rhythm and that English to get the tire to grab, 
So once you get good and you have that down, you just want to run burners, just take off shit tires. If you're just learning a Shinko 777 or a Dunlop 404, something like bubblegum, is great to get it hooking up and so you can get into that wheelie and kind of learn how to throw it without having to deal with it spinning out. Do not ever drift with one of those tires. I repeat, don't ever drift with those. You'll blow your transmission up and they don't make parts for Dyna transmissions anymore. So don't don't mess that one up. But I just, my, my favorite tire is uh, Commander 2. Like they drift, they're, they're radial, they're high crown, so they slide really easy. They're a little on the slick side, so if you're learning, it's going to be a shitty tire to hook up for wheelies. Yeah. But I'm pretty, I'm way like 220, so I can, I just squat my hefty ass down on the tire and it works out pretty good. And transition the weight. Yeah. Definitely like being heavier helps. If you're trying to ride wheelies and you're on a diet, switch it up, <laughs> get on them cheeseburgers. <laughs> Cause it'll bring that bike up a lot easier. I think that's all the big, uh... I think that's it, brakes. You wanna have a good rear brake rotor, good brake pads. We run deep, uh, EBC double centered pads. like. Keep up on top of them. Brakes are what's going to save your life. So, then yeah. dot four in the rear, it has a higher boiling point. It's not going to bubble up on you so fast. But if, if you have dot five in there, you can't just switch to dot four. You have to change the whole entire brake system to do that. All right, you guys, it's so hot here in Phoenix that the camera actually died due to heat. So, we had to throw it in the freezer and now we're back on it. So, as far as the stump build goes, Ryan hit all the key points. Uh, best bikes are going to be your 2000 to 2002 early model dynos. However, I will say plenty of people pulled off with the newer bikes. You're just going to have your work cut yeah. out for you, right? Yeah, they're, they're still smooth, the wheelie and stuff like that. They're just it's a little bigger, more work. A little more to throw around. And actually anything 99 to 05 is good. Like 0405 fuel injected bike is, is a beautiful bike. They're still small. Still have a five speed. Five speeds are just way better. Big shout out again to Ryan. You can check him out. Cruise Originals on Instagram, YouTube, the whole nine. We'll put links below. And uh, like and subscribe if you dig it. We'll catch you next time. Nos vemos.